All right, let's think about uh, an economy where there's n goods, right? So some number n goods, and it's a barter economy. So what that means is people are, are not you know, using any kind of money to buy goods. They're just exchanging uh, one type of good for another when they want to exchange, right? Now, anytime a good is being exchanged for another, there's going to be a price, right? Like if you're exchanging apples for bananas, how many apples do you have to give up for bananas? And that would be the price of bananas in terms of apples, right? Um, so the question is, okay, um, how many different prices would there be for all these, you know, pairs of goods in an economy where there's, you know, a barter economy where there's N goods, right? And of course, the number of, uh, of prices there would be is equal to the number of pairs of, of goods, right? Um, and that's going to be equal to the way to choose one good and then a different good, another good. Um, and we're not going to, we're going to say that the order doesn't matter, right? So, for example, uh, you know, if you choose apples first and then bananas, we could say, okay, well, that's the price of apples in terms of bananas. And, and once we know that price, we know that basically the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of that would be the price of uh, bananas in terms of apples, right? So let's say the price of apples in terms of bananas is three, right? So you have to pay three bananas in order to buy an apple. Well, then we know that uh, the price of bananas in terms of apples would be one third, right? How many apples do you have to give up to get a banana? Get a banana, you have to give up a third, right? In other words, um, an apple would buy you uh, three bananas, right? So uh, we're we're not going to do that any, that kind of double counting, right? Once we know one price, then we know the inverse, basically. Um, so what we need to do is figure out the number of ways to choose two goods, right? Two different goods out of n. And then we're going to divide by the number of ways they can be ordered, right? Okay, so if you think about it, you know, choosing one good and then another when there's n, n goods, well, that means that the first good, you have n choices, right? So for each of the n ways to choose the first good, there's going to be then n minus 1 left over for which to choose the second good. So basically, that means there's going to be n times the quantity of n minus 1 ways to choose two goods in a particular order, right? But again, we don't want to we don't want to count uh, you know pairs of goods that where you know you choose apples and then bananas. We don't want to count that as you know, and then also choose uh, you know bananas and then apples, right? Um, or vice versa, right? So, and of course, you know, since we're choosing pairs of goods. They could, uh, any pair can only be ordered one of two different ways, right? So it can be ordered, you know, good one, good two, right? Apples and bananas, or it could be good two, good one, right? Bananas and apples. So since there's two ways to order any pair, and we don't want to double count, that means we're going to divide by two, right? So what we're left with is n times the quantity n minus one ways to choose two goods where the n, where the order does not matter, right? And that's going to be equal to the number of prices that are, are, are in this barter economy, right? Okay, so let's do uh, an illustrative example to kind of see how this works, right? So let's just say n equals 3, right? So there's three goods in the economy, and let's just say uh, that there are goods A, B, and C, right? Well, plugging n equals 3 into our uh, the formula, uh, that means there's going to be you know 3 times the quantity of 3 minus 1 divided by 2, right? So basically, 3 minus 1 is going to be 2, divided by 2, they cancel, and so we're left with 3, right? So there's three pairs uh, that we can form where the order doesn't matter, right? So basically, there's three prices among the three goods, right? There's the price of, uh, you know, the price between A and B, what is it, you know, what, how, how much do they exchange for each other, uh, how much do A and C exchange for each other, and then how much we, do we exchange B and C? And notice we don't have any pairs where it's the reverse order of another pair. Like we have AB, so that means we don't need BA, right? And we don't need CA since we already have AC. And likewise for BC, we don't need CB, right? Okay, now as I was writing up these notes, I kind of thought, okay, well, you know, barter economy is kind of weird to think about because there are no barter economies these days. Um, however, what we learned here can actually be applied to thinking about exchange rates, right? 
So we live in a world where there's lots of different currencies, right? Lots of different currencies across lots of different countries or, uh, you know, monetary zones like the Eurozone, right? Um, and let's, let, let's just apply this. Uh, so, and of course, the prices of currencies in terms of each other, those are exchange rates. We call those exchange rates. It's just a fancy term for the price of one currency in terms of another. Um, so how many exchange rates are, would there be, say, in a world where there's 100 currencies? Well, just it's basically the same idea as what we've been talking about. So here n would be equal to 100. So if, there, if n's 100, then we have 100 times the quantity of 100 minus 1 divided by 2. Right? So basically 100 times 99 divided by 2. Um, and of course, this is going to be equal to 4,950. So there's 4,950 4, exchange rates in a world with 100 currencies. And again, we're not double counting, right? So if we know the exchange rate between you know, dollars and yen, right, American dollars and Japanese yen, then we're not also going to count the inverse exchange rate, you know, uh, how many, uh, you know, like if, if we know dollars per yen, then not, we're not going to look for yen per dollar, right? Uh, because we, we know that it's just going to be the inverse, right? <clears throat> okay, so I thought that'd be a, a, a nice application of what uh, of what we learned here. Um, if you're interested in some of the math here, uh, I mean the, the, these this kind of math actually is used in a lot of mathematics, right? Um, and so the number of ways to choose k items from n items. It's often denoted like this, right? So you have you know these big parentheses with one number on top of the other, but no line because the line would you know that, that means division, and we're not dividing here. Uh, another uh, notation that's that's quite popular that I've seen is having a, a you know a, an n right here and then a big c and then the k, right? And both of these mean the same thing, and the, and the red n choose k, and it's the number of ways to choose k items from from n items, right? where the order doesn't really matter, right? Um, and by the way, these are often called, often referred to as binomial coefficients because, you know, they actually pop up when you're, uh, when you expand a binomial, right? Um, and so if, if, you're, if you're interested in finding out more about these, you can look up binomial co coefficients or, uh, you know, n choose k, you know, this is part of, um, uh, I mean, like I said, it shows up in a lot of mathematics, but uh, I guess probably the main field where it comes from would be combinatorics, but you also see it, see it in statistics and calculus and all over the place. So anyways, I just thought I'd throw in some mathematical background for anybody who's interested in finding out more about this stuff. All right. Thank you so much for watching.